Rivers are filled with it. Fishes are swimming with it. Beachfronts are collecting it. Landfills are clogged with it. Trash bags are filled with it. As a country, we have a major problem with respect to plastics. We love to litter when using any single-use plastic products. Statistical evidence from SIB National Survey DOE Public Awareness 2016 shows that annually we import 52 million pieces of food containers, styrofoam and plastics, 200 million plastic bags, 57 million plastic bottles and 37 million agricultural plastic bags and annually manufactured products of 5 million pieces of styrofoam. 35 million single-use plastic bags, 432,000 styrofoam egg trays, and 500,000 plastic straws and utensils, which accounts to approximately 100,000 metric tons municipal waste for final disposal. This product has much usage to us. It has proven to last longer than a lifetime. Plus, it's a material we can't seem to live without. It can take hundreds of years to break down and even so, its presence is still there in the form of microplastic. It's hurting wildlife and aquatic life. It's in our food chain. Plastic is everywhere. What are we doing about it? Protection, um, that particular legislation is at the DOE, it's called the plastics rigs. Why the plastic rigs? Well, it was it is the DOE's first attempt at managing single use plastics. So the Department of Environment had engaged a consultant to identify mechanisms and try to work a system to to evaluate the Returnable Containers Act. What that showed was actually that there's a high level of imports of single-use plastics. So what we did was in, in, introduce this particular legislation so that we can establish an import system, we can identify restricted and prohibited products, and we could also start to transition into biodegradable products. So the regulation, um, first of all, highlights some plastics that we want to phase out. So all of these single-use disposable containers and single-use plastic bags, these were the focus of this legislation that we would have been able to phase them out and phase in something else. How we would have controlled it was through a permitting system. The permitting system would require that persons that either manufacture or import certain items would have to get a license from the DOE. For importers, that would mean that certain plastics would now require a permit. So the ideal bag, the, <coughs> the Ziploc bags, the garbage bags, all of these things would be required if you're going to import it, you would have to get a permit from the DOE. Similarly, if you were going to manufacture these items, you would also need to get a permit. We do have manufacturers that manufacture um, garbage bags, pong bags, the, you know, the clear plastic bags. We had, so we had companies that used to make straw. We have companies that used to make um, um, t-shirt bags as well. So we had a local manufacturing sector. And so we, the, the idea of the legislation was start get information on what actually we're producing, how we're importing, and start to putting a mechanism that would allow for us to start regulating the sector with the aim of reducing um, our imports 
of certain products, start also looking at getting information so that then we can strengthen the Returnable Containers Act. So let me ask you this question then. Are all plastics prohibited? <laughs> no, they're not. So remember I told you that the regulation transitions us into biodegradables. So the, the focus of the legislation really is short. It's very, very specific. So you're talking about disposable single-use cups, whether it be styrofoam or plastic. Um, <clears throat> the single-use styrofoam or plastic trays, clamshells, hamburger, um, um, clamshells, plates, and cutlery. As well, don't forget the t-shirt bag. The t-shirt bag is the only plastic bag that has been phased out. Along with these other takeout um, items. The idea is that we have biodegradable alternatives for these. So we can transition these out. Now, when you're talking about your garbage bag, your pong bag, you know the bag that you would, you would, you would normally go at the shop and see your five pong of rice or five pong of, of flour? Those are still okay. What you require to do if you're an importer is get a permit. For the other items, if it is going to be plastic, the DOE will not be able to issue a permit. We, we, we haven't been issuing permit for those since April of 2020. Yeah. So, <clears throat> it also means that not all plastic bags, not all plastic containers, not all of these items are phasing out. The regular Ziploc and all of these things that can still come in with a permit, You're even the, the, the plastic containers, you know, the, the plastic cups that are reusable, once the item is reusable, the, the utensils, you don't require, it, it's not prohibited. Um, in some instances, it, w it would have required a permit that was creating some issues, so the law was actually amended, and with that amended, we kind of cleared out some of these items that were, were being captured that weren't necessarily the focus of the legislation. So that's the short and long of it. Okay, so let's say I want to import biodegradable, right? I believe there is an application process for that to be... To, to come into, into effect? Or yeah. Um, yeah, so again, the regulation requires that you apply. For biodegradables, what we're doing is we are registering products. So now, the regulation speaks to a national standard. So this part, we do it in conjunction with the Belize Bureau of Standards. So if you want to import a biodegradable product, you can't just import a biodegradable product. You have to um, submit to the DOE uh, a copy of your lab report. So you as, the, you as the importer would have to communicate with your manufacturer and they would have to provide to you the copy of the report wherein they have done tests to show that the item can biodegrade. The other thing is they have to include a report on the bio-based content, meaning how much organic matter it contains. So once you have these two things, you submit to the DOE. We have developed an application form that you would fill out your name, address, and some other information. Um, and we would then submit that to the Bureau of Standards. The Bureau of Standards would then review that based on the standard and they would advise us whether the products based on these tests are within the, the, the standard, fall within the standard. If it does, then we register the product and then every time you want to apply, you would have to submit an application online. We have an online portal, um, www.opal.doe.gov.bz, wherein you register and then you apply for application for your for your biodegradable product so in there you would have to include a copy of your invoice and there's also a $25 fee that you pay at the Treasury Department you upload those and once you submit that the Department of Environment gets it we review it if it meets if, if it if everything matches we will grant you the permit 
at it, and that really is uh, how you would go about about it. It's a two-step process. So once you register, then you can import that particular item. So if you register um, this brand, for example, you will be allowed to bring in this brand. You can't bring in a Yeti because the permit, you're getting a permit, but the permits will say Department of Environment. It is very specific because you registered a product. So, and all of this now is done online. So you don't have to necessarily come to, to the offices of the Department of Environment. You, you submit through the email and then you apply through, through the OPAL. And so it, it, we're transition or we're moving towards this digital agenda and just digital um, profiles where we're trying to facilitate the trade um, and making uh, our consumers or, or, or our customers be able to apply online. For those who have not heard about standards or even know the importance of standards, how can you relate that to us? All right, so the simplest way that I could put this is in our daily lives, there are many products that we use that relies or is built from standards, making it vital for our commerce, our transportation system, even the technologies that we use every day. Now, you see, Standards are everywhere, all right? This is what makes our life easy. Even though we might not have ever heard of them, we don't even know they're there, but they are there to set structure to our lives. Now, there, traditionally, there are two types of standards. There's the consensus standard, which is voluntary, meaning is not required by law to be implemented. However, nothing stops you from implementing it in your products, your services, in your business because then you are better off. What that creates is confidence in what you're providing. It creates trust for your customers, which in effect would give loyalty, no? So then, apart from that, then there are the standards that become mandatory, which are incorporated into the regulations. So you're telling me that the world cannot do cannot operate a function without a standard, <laughs> or standard. Okay, before I answer that, I'll ask you a question to put okay. it into perspective, okay? Imagine going online to purchase from a manufacturer anywhere in the world, and they don't even use the minimum requirements of a standard for quality and safety. How would that make you feel? Mm. Not, not, not well, not, not good. Alright, for one, that product can fall apart. Two, it may prove to be unsafe. Three, it may not even be compatible for the purchase of the equipment you want to use that you already have. So, to answer your question, of course not. Standards are very vital. They keep everything around us and, and we, we may not even know it gives structure to our lives, even though we don't know. So everything runs normal around us, not even knowing that in the background, standards is doing a lot. All right, so just as we're seeing now with the impact of plastics, right? Um, an entity engages the Bureau and asks for the development of a standard, which what we're talking about today is the biodegradable standards. So with that said, it is very important that you see that we have a problem. Plastics, it damages our environment, the ecosystem, and it all indirectly plays to our uns unsafety for humans and, and so forth. So what we do when developing a standard, and this is called the standardization development process, is that we invite government, industry, academia to be able to develop a well-rounded standard document, right? With that, once we've done that, we advertise this to the public so that we can tell them this is what we're doing, this is the problem we want to fix, we want to make it better. And they go ahead, they read that, they give us our comments, we come back to the table and we fix it. And it's not based on a gut feeling, it has the whole standardization development process is based on science. So if something needs to be changed, there needs to be scientific evidence, okay? So, in, in this instance, in the phase out of single-use plastics, well then, this is why we're developing that standard. 
and mind you that a standard can take up to two years to develop so you can see this standard goes through a rigorous process because it will impact everyone industry government even the consumers so we want to make sure that the process the the, the final document is fair for everyone because it's going to impact everyone wow this is this is pretty deep stuff um because you see professionals they come together yeah. and even academia as you mentioned earlier and it tells me that this process is engulfed in science right mm. and um, what happens here is that this cannot be a guessing game between right and wrong and as you mentioned earlier so this would make me ask you this question which is very important okay. um, is this the core mandate of the Belize Bureau of Standards? So this is one of the many core mandates of the, of, the, of the Bureau to develop standards along its respective technical committee members in the guidance. You see, um, when we develop the biodegradable standards, it's like the process I told you before, but there can be times where we do get stuck and we do need the guidance of a professional. With the, part, with the international and regional partners that the Belize Bureau of Standards have. In that case, we were able to afford to bring one down to be able to help us that, specialize in, that specializes in biodegradable products. So with that said, then we could move forward because remember, we want this standard document what, once it's signed and it's a mandatory standard to, that everyone will be impacted by. You want to make sure that it makes sense and that is fair for all users. I believe what an impact a standard can have, right? Especially when you have brilliant minds. And when we have that essential factor in this, in this case right here, mm -hmm. and even experience in the industry, you know, where um, they come together and, and develop this document, right? You mentioned earlier, it takes approximately two years yeah. And that is for the benefit of the country and also a benefit for the people. So then it would force me to ask um, or, or triggers my curiosity. Um, if we have a regulation, mm -hmm. right? what is the effect of this standard on it? All right. So one thing is to have the regulation. But when you develop a standard for it, what it does is it empowers the regulation it ensures compliance to it you see also the outcome of the standard apart from that is that it's like a guideline that it you know it shows the the importers and the manufacturers what are the parameters what are the specifications they need to know so that they know what type of right biodegradable products they need to import in the country also the right type of raw materials when producing that final product. So it's very important. It's like an instruction manual. It is clear that standards gives instructions to the user and, and, and guides them, right? Um, what to do instead of giving them a law and telling them what to produce or what to import. Um, we understand that part as you mentioned earlier. Um, so my question right here would be what is to be done for me to know that what this product is saying it is it is what it is saying that it is okay um, you see since we were the first to develop the standards in the region and in the absence of test uh, of in-country testing then we had to strategize a way that we can check that it is what it is it's uh, that it is biodegradable and through the standard what we created was a system that asks for a dossier of documents certificates that can prove to us so that when we evaluate it against the standard that it is what we're asking for to enter into the country right whether it be imported or whether it be the raw materials that creates that is produ that produces that biodegradable product okay so this this system would be called a third party certification system and with that then we take control of how we can check that it is a biodegradable product 
there is where um, we can trust and have this confidence exactly so that when you go to the supermarkets to buy it is a biodegradable product that you're buying okay so that's just the checks and balances um, and the way that in which we strategize and we can use to evaluate against the standard so you could see with the standards being developed with the third party certification set in place this is one of the first actions that we're doing to find solutions to some of the SDGs that is correlated with what the biodegradable products are um, that is what I, that is exactly what came into my into my mind when you mentioned that mm -hmm. you know it's most definitely starting to lead us into the path of obtaining these solutions for the SDGs and later on um, I will come to which ones is specific right but first what would you say to our consumers and what would you tell them to look out for when they are in the store for these products well when they go shopping to the supermarkets what they need to to observe is that they look at the packaging that the biodegradable product is no as you could see what they would have here is well it have more information than this but what you want to do is look at the label that's on it to make sure that one they can see that it biodegrades within 365 days and two that it has no uh, no less than 50 percent bio-based content now what i mean by bio-based content it can mean sugars starch protein wood and natural fibers and so forth so that is good to know that there are only two things you know that we need to look out for. Yeah, two two very important things so that they can tell that that truly is biodegradable. That is wonderful. It is great that we see grand effort in the development of this standard for for biodegradable. No? And congratulations for being the first in the region. Um, surely in charted waters, you know, and especially. Um, even more to empower the regulation, right? And also, it is impressive that there is a system in place. That is, that is something very important. Um, a funnel to speak, right? Because we can now see that there is compliance with the standard. But don't get me wrong with what I will say right now. Despite of all the system that is in place and the rules that are in place, I am pretty sure that people will find loopholes and you will still find plastics that are being sold in those shops. So that forces me to ask, is there something in plan that you have to tackle that situation? Well, everybody will tell you that a regulation is only as strong as the monitoring that and the enforcement that goes along. Um, we have one advantage. The regulation is being because we have, we are, we are doing something with, with standards, we have a good partner. We have Belize Bureau Standards and the DOE. We are actually on the ground as we speak. Um, we have officers on the ground doing market surveillance. And so basically we're going into shops, identifying the biodegradable products that are in the market, um, identifying whether they're prohibited items. But to go even further, really, the only way that we will identify whether these products actually meet the standard is if we test. That's where we're going. We're going to do conformity assessment. So what that means is that we're going to take samples of the biodegradable products, we'll send it to a lab, and we will identify uh, a specific test to be conducted. And once we get the results, we will then notify the importer whether what the results of this of this test is so while i trust all of these importers we like sleep with your own eyes we need to test and we need to do this and this is what we're going to do in the next couple of months and so in the near future we will be able to advise the public on which of these products really are meeting the standards where these standards are not met I believe there will be a deregistration process. You've registered based on what you've submitted, but if for any reason something doesn't match up, then you'll be deregistered as well. And so compliance monitoring is, is, is something that is very important. 
it is very costly, but it also means that you as a consumer will know that in fact that the item that you're buying is a biodegradable product. A little bit further, as a consumer, you have the opportunity to go to any shop and ask, if you have a query about a specific brand or item, you can take a picture, email it to info at environment.gov.bz and you then also be, become part of this monitoring team. So it's, it's something that we have the, the DOE and Bureau, and then the consumer also has a part of it, right? So like Aldo mentioned with the surveillance activities, that would be the second action that we take in pursuit of solutions to the SDGs. Now with that said, these SDGs, um, these SDGs would be life on land, life below water, good health and well-being, um, clean water and sanitation, and in respect to the numbers would be SDG 15, 14, 6 and 3. So you see we've done two actions to make sure one that we are making that we are checking what's being imported into the country and what is being produced to make sure that they are biodegradable and they are the type of biodegradable that the standard requires for the country. Closing loopholes that we do that surveillance to make sure we check the shelves that no more plastics are being sold. Secondly, the biodegradables that are on there that they have been registered. And thirdly, if there are other biodegradables there that have not been registered, we note that so that, that we can come back later on. And with that said, we make it a safer environment for the country of Belize and it becomes safe for us so that we may have a better Belize today and for our future. We stand united to work together to accelerate the 2030 Agenda with standards for the SDGs and a shared vision for a better world.